or guilty. That's not my point today. In fact, I, that's God's point, not mine. He judges, not me. But my point is, do you suppose that through the troubles, troubles and turmoil that all these, whether it was biblical characters or these modern day pastors, do you suppose that through all the issues that they went through, when the chips were down, when they were told they were going to be fired, when they came to the Red Sea, when they didn't have any water, when he said, shout louder, or whatever it is they said, do you suppose that the people that he, they were leading were in the back praying for them? Or were they throwing darts? There's a strange phenomenon when it comes to church leadership. And, and just so you know, as I talk about church leadership today, I am not talking strictly about pastors. I'm talking about any kind of church leadership. I'm talking about board members. If we talk specifically about Wiggins Community Church, board members, committee members, youth leaders, um, director of Christian education, our secretary downstairs, the custodian, or anybody else that takes any kind of a leadership position for whatever function we're talking about that's happening in the church, that's what I'm talking about, church leadership. But there's a strange phenomenon that happens, and that is that, that I, as your pastor, stands up here week after week and says that we should forgive people. We should forgive people seven times 70, as Jesus said, which basically means an infinite number of times we're to forgive people. And we're to let things go, and we're trying to mend bridges, and we're to be peacemakers, and, and, and we're not to fight and argue amongst ourselves. But when it comes to church leadership, we forget most of that. It's just so easy to point fingers at church leadership. And in some ways, the unsaid rule is, while it's not okay to talk about your neighbor, who's just someone who sits in the pews with you, it's okay to talk about church leadership. Because they're in a position of leadership, they're supposed to be there for me, and they're supposed to do things the way I want, so if they're not going to do things the way I want, I'm going to be unhappy, and I'm going to talk about them. And it happens. It happens. But as we continue in our book by Tom S. Rayner, I Am a Church Member, chapter 4 is about praying for your church leadership. And that's, that's really just a superficial idea because what he's really talking about is that you should pray for and with your church leadership, that you should be one with your church leadership, that there shouldn't be dissension between you and your church leadership, even if... You don't agree. Now, I have to tell you that when I, when I came to this chapter, I, I'd read through it a while ago, and then as I read through it this week, I said, oh, no. I, I hate this. And I hate this because the manly side of me says that I am a church leader, so if I stand before you today and tell you to pray for church leadership, it could come across like I'm whining about me. So I want to I wanna preempt all of this and tell you this. I'm good. I'm good. This is not about me. I, I have no personal vendettas. I don't want woe is me. I don't want a single person coming up to me after church and saying, oh, Pastor Mark, I didn't know it was that bad. Because it's not. This is just chapter four in the book. <laughs> and there's the voice of reason. So today we're going to talk about church leadership and we're going to talk about what God says that we should pray for that church leadership. And I'm really going to key in on those two verses that Pat read in Hebrews. Those are really the ones that have the meat for us to look at. So I'm going to tear those two verses apart and I'm going to tell you, first of all, why you should be praying for church leadership and then second of all, how you're to pray for church leadership. And this all comes from God's word. So first, though, the why you should pray for church leadership. First thing is that God says that they, church leadership, know or knows about your life. Now, I want you to think about this. As church leaders, the whole point of being a church leader is to make your relationship with Jesus Christ better. There would be no point in having church leadership if it was a self-serving thing because most of the church leadership that we're talking about today does not get paid. These church leaders come forward because they feel a calling by God to do things, 
a wide variety of things that makes your life better, that makes your religious experience, your worship experience better. In fact, if you think about it, the church, as we talk about an entity versus We've talked a lot about the church being inside of us. But this establishment we call a church is really about you. It's about helping you connect to God. It's about helping you learn how to worship God. It's about you learning how to live your life according to God. And so anybody, any church leader that's worth their salt, when they come into that leadership position, they should be about you. And so you should be praying for them because they are making decisions for you. Now, that means that they have to think like you. They have to know about you. They have to hear from you. And then through prayer, they go back and they make the decisions that they think will best fit you or benefit you. But here's kind of the kicker. Sometimes they, church leadership, knows you better than you know you. Sometimes they know what's best for you when you don't. Because they're looking at it from the outside looking in, sometimes their decisions may not be popular. It might not have been the decision you made. But every church leader should be thinking about you and you alone, and that's why you need to pray for their leadership. Second reason we should pray for church leadership, because they are supervised by God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequately equipped for every good work. Church leaders, when they make these decisions that benefit you, are supposed to be led by God, and I pray that that's the way it is. If you've ever attended a church meeting, it opens with a prayer, it ends with a prayer. As a board, we meet 30 minutes early every time that we meet so that we can continue our knowledge about what God wants and how God would have us lead. Church membership is led by God. Now that creates an even bigger problem because we spend the majority of our time out there in the secular world. And whether we like it or not, we are inundated with secular ideas. We learn the majority of what we learn out there. And so our decision-making process is based in a lot of ways on secular ideas. Now, reflect that with the fact that the church board and any other kind of leadership is supposed to be specifically Bible-bound in their direction and their decision-making. And what you find is that you have an opposition. You have secular ideas versus biblical ideas. And so if a church board or a church entity or a church leader makes a decision based on biblical ideas, I can almost guarantee you that it's going to be in conflict with secular ideas. And so if we come in those doors with our secular mindset and we listen to biblical decisions, those are going to be unpopular. For instance, take this word that we don't say a lot, especially at Wiggins Community Church, evangelism. Everybody say that. Evangelism. Very good. Now, evangelism is in the Bible, believe it or not. In fact, evangelism is basically the Great Commission jammed into one word. The Great Commission says, go, seek, find, teach, and bring people back into my kingdom, into my church, if you will. Jesus said that. It's said other places that that's the greatest thing that we're supposed to do. Our purpose in life once we reach Christ is to get strong enough to get up out of these pews, go out through those doors and talk to people and say, hey, do you know about this thing we call Jesus Christ and Christianity? It is the greatest thing I've ever had in my life. It's changed my life. I encourage you to think about it. Come to my church. Let's sit down and talk about it. Let's open the Bible. Let's pray. Let's do whatever it is. That is really our whole purpose in life. But it's not popular. So if we go back to church decisions based on biblical wisdom, What if you came in next week and I, your church leader, said, I've changed the membership qualifications for Wiggins Community Church. I went to God's word 
And I found in there that it says that our whole purpose in life is to evangelize, to go out and spread the word of God. So from this point forward, if you had a membership, it's null and void because we're setting up new qualifications. From this point forward, if you're going to become a member of Wiggins Community Church, you have to prove that you go out and evangelize five people per month. I want names, I want addresses, I want times, I want descriptions. And then we're going to meet about it and we're going to talk about it. And I expect to see these people in the pews because God said you're supposed to do it. And if not, you won't be a member of Wiggins Community Church. I can't imagine that would be a popular decision. Anybody here think that'd be a great idea? I see no hands. Does anybody here argue the fact that biblically that's what we're supposed to do? Okay. You see, there's secular wisdom and there's biblical wisdom. And if your church leaders are making decisions based on church Biblical wisdom might not be popular. So that's why you should pray for them. God also says that you should pray for church leadership because they have a difficult job. Now, this is the part that I hate because it's almost like I'm whining, but I'm not. We've already covered that. I have worked many, many, many jobs in my life. My wife and I sit down and we laugh about this. I just want to list off some of the jobs that I've had during my life. I've worked as a cook. I've cleaned. I've been in the military. I've sold auto parts. I've sold truck parts. I've worked in a truck parts shop. I've been a shop foreman. I've been a private investigator. I've been a bounty hunter. I've been a bouncer. I've been a secretary, I've been a custodian, I've been a teacher, and the list goes on. There's probably five or six other things in there that I've done over the last 25 or so years of my life. Hands down, this is the absolute most difficult job I've ever done. This is hard. And just keep in mind, I get paid for it. The rest of your leaders don't. It's hard because the whole entire premise of this job is you. It's making you happy. It's seeing to your needs. It's not living based on my thoughts and decisions. It's living based on God's direction and your needs, wants, and desires. That means that my life in a lot of ways isn't mine. It's yours. And that makes it incredibly hard. And it makes it hard because sometimes you guys don't appreciate that. Or at least it seems that way. And again, think of bigger than me, church leadership, church leadership, church leadership, because I'm good. Sometimes it seems like no matter what decision you make, it's the wrong decision. Just when you think you've got it all together and you've got it figured out, you implement something and the next thing you know you go home and you open up an email and it's, Dear Pastor, you stink. <laughs> I would have thrown another dart. And even more than that, though, if you can get through that, I want you to understand that church leadership in so many ways is called to walk through life with you. And yes, there are good times, but when does the pastor and the church leadership most often get a call? When things are down. So you're asking people to walk through life with you and experience all the negative things that happen in your life. You're asking for pastors and church leaders and deacons to come alongside you when death and sickness happens. And I don't know if you realize it or not, I think most of you do, we absorb a little bit of that every time. And that is hard. And then when you go home and you get one of those emails or you're sitting in the coffee shop and you hear, I heard, she said, you did. It's hard. That's why you should pray for your church leadership. So those are the reasons why. Let's talk about how. What does a prayer for a church leader encompass? What, what things should you be praying for for church leadership? I've listed just a few, and I'll go through them rather quickly. Pray for church leaderships that they have encouragement. 
that they are encouraged to continue doing what they're doing. We've already discussed that leadership is hard work. Do you know the average tenure of a pastor across the United States is 3.6 years? 3.6 years is the average stay for a pastor in a church, and then they're gone. Now, there's a lot of circumstances out there, but most often or not, what you hear from pastors is, I just didn't feel encouraged anymore. I just didn't feel the love. Pray that pastors are encouraged, that leaders are encouraged. I mean, I don't know if you know, but it is difficult to find leaders even at Wiggins Community Church. We've got a board position open, by the way. If you're interested, see Darlene or Ron. It's hard to find leaders. This is what I hear, especially from people that have served before. And just think about the impact as we talk about encouragement. Think about the impact of this statement. I've done my time. What'd you do, five to ten in St. Quentin or what? There you go. It felt like it. Now we're being honest. Pray that leaders are encouraged. They, outside of me, most of your leaders give up their time. It's free. They volunteer. Pray for encouragement. Number two, pray for their submission. Church leadership answers to a higher power, that being God. And not only do they answer to God, but yes, in so many ways, especially in a congregational church, they answer to you. So it's imperative that church leadership be submissive in a lot of ways. Yes, they need to be bold, and yes, they need to stand for positive things, but church leadership needs to be submissive as well. Pray that they can see the right time to be submissive and to the right entity to be submissive to. Pray for their knowledge. Pray for their knowledge. The world is ever-changing. God's word is not. That means that God's word has to constantly be dug through to understand how to make it relative to our ever-changing world. That takes knowledge. Church leadership is constantly, that time before board meetings, is constantly trying to expand their knowledge and wisdom. Pray that they are smart about their decisions, their knowledge. Pray for others to get involved. Churches operate on the 1090 rule. 10% of the people do 90% of the work, and your church leadership is involved in almost all 90% of that. Especially, I'll just speak for myself as a pastor, I am constantly pushing my board to be involved in one way or another with every event that goes on in this church. They get wind of everything we're doing before you ever hear about it. And my goal is always to have at least one member of church membership besides myself involved in every activity. And again, remember, they're doing this for free. So we need other people to get involved. We need other leaders to step up. We still have an opening on the board, don't we, Darlene? Pray that people talk to and not about church leadership. I, I, I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. Pray that people talk to and not about church leadership. Why is it okay to talk about the board, the director of Christian education, the pastor, behind their back? Why did you, and I always ask this question, well, did you talk to them? Well, mighty fine weather we're having nowadays, aren't we? Why don't we go to them and talk to them? Are you afraid that if you talk to them, they might have a valid point? Are you afraid they might change your mind? Or are you just not sure about your decision either? Talk to and not about leadership. Pray for their health. Stressful. Your needs come before the leadership's needs. You call in the middle of the night, they're there. They, they show up at board meetings at 6.30 at night. They've already worked 10, 12 hours. They go home, get a little rest. They go off to work the next day. They're in and out of hospitals visiting, visiting people. You're around sick people all the time. You're stressed. You don't get enough sleep. Pray for their health. Pray for their family. It's like anything else. You bring your work home with you, if you want to call it that. I feel so sorry for my son and my wife about seven days out of the week. Because they have to hear. Yes, I confide in them. Not everything, just so you know, not everything. But when I'm frustrated, they hear about it. They're my family. They're the ones who support me and love me. Church leaders are all like that. They go home and, oh, we had that meeting. Oh. 
Pray for their family. Pray for their protection is the final one. Pray for their protection. You know, if Satan was trying to, I don't know where I came up with this analogy. I guess I'm just hooked on music. If Satan was trying to shut down a rock concert, would he attack the band or would he attack the crowd? He'd attack the band. In so many ways, your church leadership is the band. They're the ones organizing and instrumentaling, instrumenting everything that goes on in the church. Satan attacks them, creates doubt. Sometimes I think Satan sends those emails I get. It says Joe Smith, but I know it's Satan. <laughs> Pray for their protection. So chapter 4 is about praying for your leadership. I, I hope I didn't whine too much. I, I hope I, I got into your minds that, that the church leadership is, number one, it's here for you. So talk to it. Pray for it. And here's, here's an amazing thing. Think about this. If, if the church leadership is praying over a situation and you're involved in that situation, and I pray and I hope that church leadership always prays over situations that come up. If the church leadership is praying and communicating to God and you're not, well, there's a disconnect, isn't there? But now think about it. Church leadership over here praying to God congregation or people involved praying to God, is it possible in some small way that God could communicate to both entities and come up with a better solution than either of us could alone? Prayer is communication, not only to God, but he helps us to understand other people. And there's just this weird, weird thing that if, I, if I'm so angry with you, but I sit down at night and I pray for you, I just can't stay angry very long. It's just an amazing thing. It's a God thing. That if I can just bring myself, please, God, help that woman. Even if it looks like that. At least I'm communicating. Pray for your leadership, and your leadership will pray for you. And we'll both communicate with God. Your leadership in this church is your board, your committee members, your ushers, um, Sue serves as a leader for Blessed, Director of Christian Education. Tracy kind of is the leader of the office. Um, there's leaders everywhere. Anybody that, uh, you know, Peggy and uh, took charge for the cleanup. Peggy and Lisa Meagle got, took charge for cleaning up Bob's yard this week. They're leaders. There's a group of men outside. Someone in there said, let's be a leader and let's get this, this wall done. They're everywhere. Every opportunity you get, pray for your leadership. That brings us to, to, to our fourth pledge. If you've been with us, or even if you hasn't, haven't, I'll kind of explain it to you. This book has six chapters. At the end of each chapter, there's a pledge. And the challenge for the last three weeks, and then this week, is this. On the back of your bulletin is this pledge. The challenge is that you allow me to read it to you, and then if you're willing to become a more biblical church member as this book is trying to make us be, if you're willing to at least try to do these things, I want you to sign it. I want you to date it. Mark, will you put that basket in the middle of the aisle out there, please? There's a basket in the middle of the aisle as you leave. Drop it in there, and we'll add it to our, our poster over here week by week. So the fourth pledge says this. I will pray for my pastor church leader every day. I understand that the church leader's work is never ending. Their days are filled with numerous demands that bring emotional highs and lows. They must deal with critics. They must be a good husband and father or wife or mother. Because my pastor, church leaders, cannot do all things on their own power, I will pray for their strength and their wisdom daily. If you will accept that challenge and give it a shot, sign it, date it, turn it in. Let us close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, wherever we turn in the world, there are men and women that have been called to your service. And sometimes it's so easy for us to point fingers at them and say, that's not quite the way I would have done it. Lord, help each, each and every one of us today that, that in the future, as we are faced with these situations, that we just pray for them. Pray for the situation. Pray for the leader. Pray that through you, we can communicate better with them. Lord, we, we strive to be a better biblical church member each and every day of our lives. And it's to your glory that we do this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.